You're listening to The Girl Dad Show. Welcome to Season 3 of The Girl Dad Show, where we explore the intersection of parenthood and entrepreneurial spirit. Join me and some incredible guests as we share tips and tricks for finding work-life balance and making a positive impact not only on the world, but also our families. Let's create a fulfilling life together. It's The Girl Dad Show, Season 3. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Girl Dad Show. Today is another Girl Dad Talk, where I interweave my professional parenting journey in between wonderful interviews with amazing parent guests. And so if you are new to the show and season three, this is where I just tell you how I'm doing as a parent and what I've been learning as a professional parent building businesses and my professional career while raising a family. And it is a very special episode for me because I want to talk to you a little bit about my journey with my kids this weekend and how Amy has never really left the kids. And I wanna talk to you a little bit about that and what I'm going through as we speak right now as I record this and uh, the things that are going through my mind and how I'm thinking about parenting. But I also wanna give you a quick update on where I'm at professionally. So um, professionally, things are going good. We have uh, a lot of new clients coming in from my consulting business. That has been really, really refreshing and really great since um, we lost a lot of clients in uh, the fall of last year through the economic kind of collapse in the venture world that has spilled over into banks and all this other good stuff. And that really caused a huge downturn in layoffs. And obviously, consultants were one of the first people to go. And so it was a really interesting time to be in consulting. And so I'm finally glad to see some of that coming back and my consulting business is starting to show a little sign of relief and some uh, greener pastures, which is very exciting. And then second of all, um, the pool service business is growing gangbusters, even bigger than before and faster than before. And there's a lot of new things that we've learned um, about the pool business as we have started to creep up in size. And so now that we've hit um, close to, no, we're over 300 routes now. So we have now over 300 customers. Uh, The problem sets have really started to change and it's no longer the labor costs. It's starting to creep up with maintenance costs on the trucks. So the equipment costs are starting to cause a lot of like differences in our thesis and expectations, which has been really fun to like learn about. And then it's been really fun entertaining all these new interested parties, both from investors, Um, and employees and competitors. Uh, We're definitely getting a lot more notoriety and um, it's been really nice to engage in a lot more conversations with people in the industry. Uh, I think, uh, you know, within 16 months, we've actually started to establish ourselves as people that know what we're doing. And uh, it's been really, really interesting the last few months um, getting to be a bigger player in our our little sphere up here in Northern Austin in the pool industry vertical. And uh, that's going really well. And uh, the podcast is going really good. Super excited to say that even during the break, we had really great downloads. And it looks like season three is already off to a really great start. We're already looking at like almost double uh, the download amounts than season two episodes, which is way above the, you know, the nominal single digit increase month over month we saw in season two. Uh, that's a that's a marked improvement. So Uh, I'm very excited about that in season three because um, season three's goal is to grow. And so I'm very excited about that huge growth. And I can't thank you enough for your continued support. You're you're listening to the show and following along on the journey. And if you can, please, we're not anywhere near as big as we need to be to even start talking to people about sponsoring. So uh, please, please, please continue to share this with anybody that is building a business or trying to build a career while navigating a family and uh, like, comment and share because those things help way more than you realize. And I, I can't I, I'd be so grateful if you were able to help me with just a five star review or just a quick comment um, on the review page. That would be very, very appreciated. And uh, lastly, let's talk about Owner's Club. Owner's Club is my newest project and it is super fun. Uh, It is still super fun. It is by far the hardest business that I've ever tackled. Um, Incredibly complex and uh, it is not going anywhere anywhere near the way that I had planned. And so that has been very, very fun to have to kind of constantly adapt on a week to week basis and spend even more time than I normally do on a business. And so a very tricky problem. The problems are very nuanced because 
the products and the services are the people themselves. And it's fun because people are not easily, um, um, easily put into a box. And so even though you sell someone a value prop of, Hey, we're, we are a community of business owners that get to network and share successes and, 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 wallow in woes together. Uh, we can also share resources and leads and we can also learn together. Uh, they all come in with an X, Y, Z expectation in addition to that. And those nuances create all of these different dynamics as well as needs and wants in programming and what that community value prop is. And so it's been very fascinating. So needless to say, although it has been growing slower than I wanted, uh, the quality of the members that have joined have been astronomical. Like, I, I just can't believe some of the people that are joining this club and the people I get to network with and hang out with. Um, you have some really cool business owners joining that are just experienced business owners that are very excited about joining a, a mastermind group of, like Owners Club and being able to network with other growth minded owners. And just this last week, we had some we had three new owners come in that were just like bonkers to me. I was like, wow, that's really cool. So that's very gratifying to get to meet all these really heavy hitter um, business owners that have unbelievable experience and mindset that I can now make friends with and network with uh, in, in a product that I created. So that's been super fun. Uh, although it has been very challenging in getting it off the ground and scaling it as fast as I want, I do have a couple new ideas and plans to grow and scale that. Um, and hopefully I'll figure it out over this year. And um, yeah, so overall it's going good. And then lastly, um, I am invested in and building a couple of other businesses, but uh, those businesses are all starting to go really well, not starting to go, they're all going really well, which is really, really great because uh, during these economic times, um, I think a lot of businesses are struggling and to know that, you know, the ones that I'm involved in are, are doing good is a huge relief because getting access to coach all of these businesses at scale, you get to see kind of a wide girth of like how the economy is doing and it is definitely impacting a lot of people. Uh, small business to big corporations and everybody in between. And um, it's it's very hard time. And so I'm very, very grateful that um, the the small businesses that I'm also involved in as an investor in Cone are, are all doing really well. So that's very gratifying. And then um, lastly, I think that this year is really headed towards um, really figuring out how to optimize for all of these things. The biggest thing that I'm realizing is that I may have overextended myself. And um, although I have a system and a process and owner's manual framework that I use to manage all these businesses, um, it does allow a hyper efficiency in time, but you add too many of them and doesn't matter how efficient you are with them. And even if each business only takes two hours a week, you add enough of them, um, it creates a lot of time. And then next, there's also a lot of time wasted from context switching. And then there's also a lot of stuff that's time is wasted when it comes to uh, problems. So if any one problem happens to one, if not four of these businesses, it does end up requiring an urgent sense of time. And so you have to like kind of drop what you're doing to go do that thing. And so I've come to the realization that I may have overextended myself, which from the outside in, it probably looks like that, given that I, um, I'm you know, an owner of like 12 different businesses. It probably seems like that from the outside in, but um, I'm starting to realize that, you know, moving forward, I want to start dialing in more of these businesses into systems and getting them more like blue ocean or getting them more like honey and hive or like flipbirds or some of these other businesses that already have established operations and rigor. And there's like, there's like a cadence and a process and a backfall. Like there's good people in place. Like all these systems are in place so that way, um, even if an emergency happens, there's actually time delay or an ability to flex on time to address the issues and help solve it. Because, you know, when three or four of these businesses have issues, it really puts a huge strain in this beautiful machine that I'm creating. And so I think I need to like slow down to level up more of these businesses so that they're more sustainable. And it goes back to this thing that I heard, um, God, I can't remember where I heard it actually, or who said it. So I apologize that I can't give credit to the to the expert that said this, but um, they basically said, you know, you're not really a business owner until a business can run without you and two, the business can grow without you. Then you're really a business owner until then you just have a fancy job. 
And uh, that has really stuck with me for a very long time. <laughs> and I have realized that I have accidentally just created myself a very fancy job. So I think I need to slow down a little bit and maybe just do instead of two more businesses this year, I'll, I'll open maybe one more, maybe none more, none more, uh, one more or none this the rest of this year and um, wait till I optimize um, the businesses that I currently have to get to a point where at least number one is done. And then uh, once those are done, then I'll feel more comfortable working on getting them to the second thing, which is helping them grow without me. And then um, I'll maybe consider starting another one. But that's kind of where I'm at professionally. This episode of The Girl Dad Show is brought to you by Owners Club. As a business owner myself, I know firsthand how challenging the journey can be. Whether it's having someone that I can ask a very tactical question to or just being able to share my big successes without guilt. Building a business is a lonely journey, and it does not have to be. After building and coaching dozens of businesses to success, there is one insight that is so obvious and simple, yet hard to execute, and that is network equals net worth. And so if you're a growth-minded, supportive, smart, and hardworking business owner looking for a community of like-minded entrepreneurs to build with, look no further than the Owners Club. You will make lifelong friends and build your business that works for you. You can learn more online at owners.club. Things are going really well, and I'm excited for the uh, second half of this year. It's starting to look very promising and um, very, very exciting, uh, especially for this podcast. I'm really excited about season three and, and getting back into this and doing these Girl Dad talks. I've missed, I've missed talking to you so much. And uh, it's really good to be back um, and uh, being able to share my journey and stuff. All right, let's move over to personal. So as a parent and as a dad, I talked to you guys last time at the Girl Dad Talk, and if you didn't listen to it, go listen to that one uh, to get the reference of what I'm talking about. Um, basically, I've had a huge shift in mindset, right? Whereas like I was building all these service businesses to create financial freedom for more time and time with my kids. And over the course of this year, I started to realize that my kid is watching and soaking my my uh, actions louder than my words and they're seeing me not work and um, and still yet have the ability to go do all these things with them and pay for things and and uh, the example that I was setting and so that made me start thinking about how I can show them what hard work looks like and so being a little bit more careful about being so accessible and being so available and I'm not saying I'm not present or I'm not going to be there for those big moments because I still think those are really important I want to do more of that than my father did because I want to be an upgrade of my dad, right? I want to be a better version of my dad and hopefully um, my kids will be a better upgrade of me, right? And so on and so forth. But I also don't want to ping to the opposite side because I'm realizing they're also watching me. And so that's been my really big focus this year and especially over the last few months is being really focused on how I can show them that uh, I'll sacrifice, you know, comfortability, sacrifice sleep, sacrifice, you know, small little like fun activities or desires to, you know, create something big or create something meaningful and work and make money because it's not easy to make money. And I want them to understand that. And I want them to understand how hard you have to work to do that. And then secondarily, just to add on to last time, last girl that talk, I also just really want them to see how important it is for you to be happy. And I had a really great conversation with Amy about this the other night. It's like, you know, whether they choose to be like us or they can't choose and they just, you know, naturally become like us because our kids become like us or they choose to intentionally not be like us. They're still using us as a benchmark and they're they're watching us to say, hey, this is what my husband could look like or this is what I should look like or um, this is what um, motherhood looks like. And, and they're using us as a benchmark because they're watching and they're soaking it all in. And, and I think not only is it important to show them that you need to work hard and, you know, it be the be the human being that you want them to be by example, not just by words, but also showing them that you have to fight to be happy for yourself. And so this is a really big epiphany for me is that like they need to see that I am also happy for myself because when I think about them, you know, soaking in who I am as a human being and potentially role modeling that I want them to date someone or marry someone in the future that is 
happy and, and is uh, striving for happiness and knows how to create happiness for themselves. And, um, and then the same goes for them. I want them to also know that they're responsible for their own future and their own, in their own life. And I want them to know that if they're not happy, they need to change that. They need to make themselves happy and figure out how to do that. And so it's really important um, for me to figure out how to show them that I'm also living a very happy life and really living the life that I want. And so I've been really incorporating a lot more of the stuff that makes me happy, which inevitably happens to be work. And uh, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of funny conversation that I have with my wife because I was like, it sounds terrible because it sounds like, you know, work has a negative connotation. And she said it the best. She said, Hey, you know, we perceive work as this thing that you have work and then you have life. And it's like, and for you, it's just, it's just what it is. And, and, and that's, that's what you want to do. And it's absolutely true because I remember talking to a friend that I'm in a little small mastermind group with um, two other guys that we talk every other week. And, one of them said this, he basically said, um, I love talking about business. I love talking about making money and I love talking about finance. If I'm not talking about those three things, I, I don't really want to hang out with you. <laughs> I said, that's not, that doesn't seem healthy. And he's like, why? It's what makes me happy. And uh, I mean, I don't know what you want me to do. Like, that's what makes me happy. That's what makes me tick. And, and it's like so funny because I started thinking about myself and what makes me tick. And it's also true. Like I actually, I have to like, you know, I have, to, I'm okay talking about other stuff, right? I'm okay talking about like movies or art or um, um, traveling or snowboarding and all these other extracurriculars. Those are great. That's good. But deep down inside, if I had to choose and what would make me the most excited and interested in a conversation, it would be work. It would be business building or uh, industries that would need disruption or, or operational logistics or <laughs> financial modeling. And it's so dumb because like, I absolutely love it. Right. And, and it's so awkward because there's so many times where I'll be at events with the other dads or hang, hanging out with other people. And, you know, the conversations are, you know, uh, never around this. And so you kind of just like, you, you know, it's fun and it's nice, but you know, and then I go to these, um, you know, these dinners or these other s groups and networking groups that I'm a part of these other communities that I'm a part of, and you hang out with other operators or other entrepreneurs and immediately like, I'm like enthralled in the conversation and, and I'm so engaged and it just like made me realize that I love to work and uh, that's what makes me happy. <laughs> It's kind of sad to say that out loud, but it was a really good conversation that I had with Amy and I started to realize that I want them to see me being happy and this is what makes me happy. And so um, luckily it's, it has a lot to do with making money. So that's kind of goes hand in hand, which is nice, but it's also bad because I spend a lot of money trying to build these businesses too. So I guess it's kind of a wash, but I do think that I know what makes me tick uh, having done all this self-reflection this year and really coming to these epiphanies of like the actions speak louder than words. And then if you're showing what work looks like, wouldn't you also want to show what, you know, a good human being is and a good human being should also be happy so they can give and, and um, then going into what makes me happy and all of these different crazy um, evolutions of that thought. Right. And so that's kind of where I'm at with parenting and it's going to be a really, really interesting uh, year for that. And just really exploring what that looks like and striking this new balance because the last three years have just been dedicated to spending as much time as I possibly could with the kids and being there for every stupid, random, silly, inane activity and thing, <laughs> like joining every possible event that they had. And, and now it's going to be like, no, I got to figure out like how I can show them that, you know, I'm not as easily accessible and I have to sacrifice to, you know, to build these things. Um, so that's, that's going to be an interesting year. And uh, what's even more exciting and interesting right now is uh, that Amy has left the house. So this is probably the fourth time she's left the kids or the fifth. I don't even know. It's definitely less than 10 times that she's left the kid. Definitely less than 10 times. It may actually be the fourth time. Um, and she has never really left the kids. And I don't think it's because she doesn't trust me or trust the kids or um, all those things. But I definitely think it's something that she has struggled with. And I'm really glad that she's on this girl's trip and uh, hanging out with some of her friends with no kids. And 
enjoying yourself. And I think it's super important, again, going back to like showing the kids what it means to be a happy human being and doing things that you enjoy and for yourself, right? In addition to being a community member of a family unit. And all these things are super important into being a healthy human in my mind. And so showing them these things is super, super important. And also for Amy, I think it's also important for Amy. And um, the big thing that I want to talk to you about is me being a parent, because I say that and, and theoretically it's awesome, but I'm like, I'm scared so shitless right now because I don't know what I'm doing. I have um, over optimized for, you know, over optimized for work and Amy is the full-time mom. And so she's over optimized for mom and I've over optimized for business building. And so like we, it's a partnership, right? So we can kind of turn our backs on each other and we can focus on these things and that's how it works. And that's why we're able to do these things. But now that I'm like responsible for these kids and there's all these things that they ask for and need, I'm like, wait, what? And they're like, oh, mom, <laughs> mom says this or mom does that. And I'm like, did she really say that or not? And it's really funny. And I've only had one night with them. And then uh, today is the second day. We have a sitter during the day while I work because I couldn't cancel a bunch of my meetings. So unfortunately, that um, I couldn't take the time off. But uh, we have a sitter here and then I'll have them tonight and then all weekend. And then again, through Monday before Amy comes back. And so it's going to be a really fun experience to get five days without Amy and just me and the kids. And so that'll be the longest time I've ever spent without Amy with the kids. And I'm very, very excited. Last night was super fun. We, um, we were uh, supposed to go to gymnastics before it got canceled. And so we were like scrambling to get all the like snacks and supplies and everything. <laughs> and it was like crazy. It's like herding cats. And then, um, um, last minute Jim called and canceled because, um, the AC was broken. And so uh, I was like, Oh, let's not eat the snacks. Let's go out to dinner. And so we went out to the dinner. We went out to dinner, not the dinner. We went out to dinner and then we went to the arcade and played video games. And then we came home a little bit past their bedtime, but we went to the swimming pool instead of, instead of going to bed. <laughs> and then we played in the swimming pool for a little bit. And then, um, we washed up and they fell asleep by, 9.30, which is, I think, an hour late, hour and a half late. That's all right. Uh, 9.30-ish. But they also didn't wake up until, like, I want to say 8.30. So I think they ended up sleeping longer than they normally sleep, a full 11 hours. And so uh, I know the timing wasn't good, but I will say, Amy, if you're listening or watching this, they slept 11 hours, which is crazy, right? <laughs> which is amazing. And so I'm um, pretty excited about that. And I'm really, really looking forward to telling you guys how I did the next time I talk to you guys, because um, secretly I'm super uh, nervous. But overall, like I'm like 10% nervous, but 90% I'm super excited. And the reason being is that I don't think that I'm going to be as great at this as Amy is. And I'm not definitely not the one that's good at like holding structure or discipline. I'm definitely not good at having a routine or being healthy and, you know, doing all the things that are good for the kids, which Amy's an amazing at. She's, she's a super mom. She's a super parent. I shouldn't say a super mom. She's a super parent. And she jokes all the time that she has three kids. Right. Um, but my thought process is it's also really good for the kids to grow up knowing that like, you know, dad is kind of a kid. He's kind of a pushover and, and, uh, we can kind of party it up and do whatever. And, and like tonight, like they're already planning, um, to move one of their beds into the playroom and we're going to watch movies until, the, until we can't, until someone falls asleep essentially. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, let's do it. That sounds great. And they're like talking about, can we snack in the bed? And I'm like, heck yeah, let's do it. And, uh, it's probably terrible, but it's just like, it's not the end of the world you know, in my opinion. And when we're 30 or 40, they're not going to like, I, I don't think it's going to change their, the direction of their life that much by just cutting loose and, and f breaking routine. And it'll be fun for me. It'll be a great experience. And hopefully it'll be a core memory for them. And so I'm excited about this weekend and spending it with them and, and diving in. But that is what's going on in my world. I hope this has helped you in your journey and in your parenting journey. And I hope that it has helped you uh, jog some things in your mind about how you can navigate your professional parenting journey. Uh, and if it has awesome. And if you have questions for me, please, uh, message me, comment on social media, happy to answer any thoughts or questions that you want to double to click on. 
And uh, thank you again for all of your support for the show. I love doing it and I love, I love being here with you. And so thank you again from the bottom of my heart for all the support. I look forward to continuing conversations in season three and let's keep building a life that's fulfilling together in every single way. Let's go season three. Thank you again for listening to another episode of the Girl Dad Show. If you enjoyed listening to this episode, please take a moment to give us a review on your podcast service. These reviews help us grow a lot more than you know.